Well hello and welcome to my latest video. I am off in just over a week to the Southern Alps with Marmot Tours, M-A-R-M-O-T Tours and I've been on uh, four or five of their tours before and they are a very fine company organising cycling tours around Europe so if you're interested check them out on the web and I'll leave a link down below to, uh, uh, to, to their website. Anyway, I'm taking my Orbea uh, Terra, uh, which is a gravel bike, um, although it's, it's, a, it's a road cycling tour. And it's got Shimano GRX gears, and it's got a fairly low set of gears on it. It's got a 4831 front, front chain set and an 11 to 34 cassette, giving me a lowest gear of 31 to 34, which is not, not a granny gear, uh, it's probably a great granny gear and may even be a great great granny gear. And uh, you're thinking, well, what's he trying to do then? Well, what I'm trying to do is go even lower. Yes, I want to get a great, 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 great granny gear. So I went on uh, YouTube and Googled and so on and so forth because what I wanted to find out is can you put an 11 to 40 uh, cassette with a 4831 chain ring and get a lowest gear of 3140 and so this video is about uh, how I set about it and whether it worked so come with me and let's have a look Right, first of all, here is the 11 to 34 cassette, which I removed from my rear wheel. Uh, if you don't know how to remove a cassette from your rear wheel, uh, your rear wheel then uh, there are videos on the internet that will show you. But here is the cassette that's been removed, and I then put the 11 to 40 cassette onto uh, the rear wheel, and I'll show you that next. Right, here is the 11 to 40 Shimano cassette which you can see mounted on the rear wheel and the rear wheel is in the bike. So that part is pretty, pretty straightforward. Buy a new cassette, take the wheel off your bike, remove the old cassette, install the new cassette, put the wheel back in the frame and that's the point that we've reached now. Next thing that you have to do is you have to make an alteration to the B screw. So let's have a look at the B screw. Now the B screw is this one. It's a screw on its own, not to be confused with these two screws that you can see here, which are the high and low stop screws. All right, so the one that we're looking at is the B screw, which is this one right here. And what you do, is using a two millimeter Allen key, which I've got here that I'm showing you. This happens to be a park tool one. You don't have to use a park tool one, uh, nor does it have to have a blue handle. I can't say for certain whether all B screws on Shimano, Campagnolo, uh, SRAM, uh, etc. Group, group sets uh, use a two millimeter allen key fitting but certainly this one does so by putting the two millimeter allen key in that little hole there i then screwed in i.e righty tighty the b screw three and a half turns now you may be wondering well what does the b screw do julian and i'm going to explain that to you now what the b screw does is to uh, adjust the distance that the upper jockey wheel has between the top of the jockey wheel and the cassette, i.e. where the chain runs. And the reason you have to screw the B screw in is because you want to create a greater gap between the upper jockey wheel where the chain runs and the big sprocket which is here on the 11 to 40 cassette. Now, if you don't adjust that B screw, uh, then the chain and the jockey wheel will be too close 
and the chain won't run freely. So as I said, I screwed it in three and a half turns. How do I know it's three and a half turns? Well, I saw a video on YouTube, which I followed, and that's what it said. It might be a little bit more for you, might be a little bit less, depending on your bike, depending on your setup, so on and so forth. But three and a half turns is what worked for me. You then will have to make, or almost certainly will have to make, adjustments to the high and low stop screws, which are these two screws here and here. All right, not the B screw, which is the one that's, uh, sorry, where's my pointer gone? It's the, this, not the B screw, which is this one here. Sorry, we're focusing very closely in. That's why my finger is looking enormous. So forget the B screw, we've already dealt with, with that. What we're looking at is the high and low limiter screws. And the high and low limiter screws are designed to prevent the chain from either going beyond the biggest sprocket and therefore crashing into the spokes or beyond the smallest sprocket and therefore crashing into the frame. So you may have to make some adjustments to those high and low stop screws once you've installed the cassette. We can then check the indexing of the gears, which is how smoothly the chain goes up the sprockets from the smallest to the biggest sprocket, or down the sprocket from the very largest to the smallest sprocket. And you adjust that, or you indexing, using this particular knurled uh, ring here. And this one on the GRX system actually is very nicely designed because you can see these small indentations allow you to turn it just one notch inwards or one notch outwards. And if the chain does not move smoothly up from the smallest sprockets as you go up to the bigger sprockets, what you need to do is tighten the cable, which you do by unscrewing this one little notch at a time until it runs smoothly. So there are separate videos on the uh, internet about indexing uh, your gears, and in fact I've made one myself. So the final thing we would do is then just turn the wheel, uh, turn the pedals, and then check that the gears are operating smoothly, and the chain is going up and down the block smoothly. And I'll try and do that while filming at the same time. Now, as you can see, the gear change is smooth, it's worked very nicely, it's worked very sweetly. But you might say to yourself, okay, Julian, but you didn't seem to be going up onto the biggest sprocket, which is this uh, dark colored sprocket you can see right at the back, as opposed to these silver colored pocket sprockets that you can see here. Now, the reason for that is the chain is currently on the big chain ring, and I'm not going to run the big chain ring to the big sprocket at the back. And the reason for that is I haven't adjusted the length of the chain. And if I was to run big to big, which I wouldn't normally do in real life anyway, uh, I'm gonna to get too much train stretch and it may not work at all. So I'm going to make sure that if I am in the big ring, I never go higher than the second to biggest sprocket. And in fact, probably the third to the biggest sprocket, even though it will work. But I wouldn't normally do that anyway. If I needed to be in that lower gear, I'd switch to the smaller chain ring anyway. And that would allow me to run the 31 to the 40, which is what this big sprocket here is, and that would run quite smoothly, and it does run quite smoothly. Well, there it is, it works. An 11 to 40 cassette 
coupled with a 4831 chain ring, uh, some adjustments to the B screw, a couple of slight adjustments to the high and low stops, a couple of little bits of twitching in regard to twitching, twinging, twitching, whatever you call it, on the indexing, and it all works sweet as a nut, as they say. Still need to use it in real life to check that everything's working fine, but on the bike stand, seems to be pretty good. So I'd like to send a big, big thank you to my mate Simon. Not appeared in this video, but uh, he did a large amount of the work. In fact, he probably did most of the work, frankly, uh, when we did the setting up of the cassette. And uh, it's always useful to have uh, somebody who knows what they're doing and knows what they're talking about to help you through those kind of difficult little jobs. So big thanks to Simon. And uh, there you are. If you're wondering whether you can put a great, 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 great granny gear on your bike, well, take it from me. It seems to work. So thanks for watching. See you next time.